Hey, all right, I got a great question on my YouTube. Um, basically asking how should you eat on rest days? Um, just to go into it first, it's really on the context and goals. Um, I assume from the from the question that that loss is the primary goal, but just this isn't for somebody that if, if sport performance and getting bigger is your goal, um, you're, the, the, you're obviously going to keep things like carbohydrates and your calories higher on those rest days, um, particularly athletes to repair glycogen um, and people looking to get bigger because you want your glycogen stores full so that you're able to train harder when you're back in the gym the following day. Um, but for fat loss, there's a couple of tips you can do. Um, number one, the main thing is cutting back your carbohydrates on rest days. The reality is your body doesn't need carbohydrates. It's the only, depending on your genotype, some people work well off carbohydrates, some people work well off fats. Um, and I've talked about this in videos before, but the majority of people on rest days, you're not gonna need your carbohydrates as high. There is no essential carbohydrates. There's essential fatty acids for fat. There's essential fatty acids for amino acids for protein, um, but there's no essential carbs. Your body actually doesn't need it. So I tend to reduce things like complex carbs on rest days. So if fat loss is your primary goal, or just body composition, particularly now because it's summer, you're looking to get in shape for summer, drop your carbohydrates on those days. You don't need to drop them to zero, but drop them well down. You know, I've talked before, like the best time to have your carbohydrates on training and non-training days is first thing in the morning and post-workout, because obviously you're most insulin sensitive, which basically means when you eat carbohydrates, your body will use them for repair, and you're not going to store them with body fat because what happens is excess glycogen, carbohydrates get converted to glucose, glucogen gets converted to glycogen, excess glycogen gets converted back to the liver and will go back in the, in, and convert itself into fatty stores and that's where, that's how people get fat from having too many carbohydrates. That's not taking insulin resistance into, into account. So assuming that you know insulin resistance is a, is a different thing. If you're chronically overweight, you're probably insulin resistant, which is very, very different from just eating carbs and getting fat. Um, so you don't need those carbs on rest days. So the first thing I would do is cut them completely. Um, now, the, what you do on with your fats, then the second tip really is dependent on you as a person and how you feel. If you're someone that works well off fats, I tend to keep my calories the same. Um, again, I don't track my macros. I don't track my calories. I play it by feel. I, I've been training for 15 years and probably dieting light longer. So I know my body now and I know what it needs when it needs it. Um, but in terms of when you're starting our first in your first five, six years of training and eating well, I would definitely track what you have. So if your calorie, you know, is 2000 calories, is your, is your maintenance and you want to drop below that, I'd probably keep it at 2,000 calories on the rest days as well, but I'd bump that up your fats to make those 2,000 calories. So if you start dropping out your carbohydrates, you're going to drop calories, you know? So I would increase my fats slightly so that my calories stay at around 2,000 and they stay the same across the entire week. So say I want to hit 2,000 calories every single day, the only thing that will change is the carbohydrates because I'm dropping out carbohydrates and increasing fats on those rest days. Um, you don't have to do that, but that tends to keep your metabolism a little bit um, firing a little bit better, um, and you just tend to feel better. You're like your brain doesn't go all fucking soggy from the lack of uh, essential fatty acids and things like that. Um, so there are my main two tips. Again, it's all about context. You know what you do on rest days is about your context. Same as I've talked about this in my online program that. There's certain supplements you'll take on your rest days, your things like your branch chain amino acids, your glutamine, you can take those on rest days, but you're obviously not gonna take your pre-workout um, or you know even your post-workout shakes and things like that. You're not gonna use those, but it's context. You know, If you're trying to bulk up and you're an athlete, that's going, my answer is gonna be completely different to if you're looking for body composition to reduce body fat. Um, so I hope this video helps. If your take home message, rest days, drop your carbohydrates and bump up your fat slightly on those days and then keep your carbohydrates at insulin sensitive time. So first thing in the morning and post-workout on those training days and that should help with your body composition. So hope the video helps. Please like and share the page um, and I'll be replying for the next 24 hours for anyone that comments below.